Um, as you know, my name is Ty Al. A little bit about myself. I run AZ Anglers on Facebook. Let me ask you folks a quick question. How many of you guys have a Facebook? Raise a hand. How many of you are on AZ Anglers? Okay, so most of you that have a Facebook, that's good. Now, if you don't, if you want to learn more about getting into fishing, please come join us. It's a group that I started about five years ago. We have over 7,400 members now. And um, again, I started out in May of, uh, I believe, 2011. And uh, since then, grown to 7,400 members. My goal originally when I started was just to help people and teach people how to catch more fish. Basically what I'm gonna do today for you. So before I ever even pick up a rod, it's very important for you folks to understand what's going on at our lakes, okay? Um, my son is sitting down there and uh, one day I'm gonna have to explain to him uh, the things that go on in the animal kingdom, such as uh, when I was growing up, couldn't figure out why the uh, ducks were actually drowning in each other in the middle of the lake. Um, one day I'm gonna have to explain that to him and uh, just, just remember the, the fish are kind of doing the same thing. So we'll start off with the bass. Basically, I'm telling you about the bluegills, shad, what's happening this time of year. So first, this time of year is the transition period from winter to spring, okay? Spring is when all the things go on with the birds and the bees, okay? Same thing goes for bass. The males, they'll move up shallow, they'll build a bed, okay? They'll fan out the little gravel, You'll see them with your polarized glasses. If you're looking for a good pair of polarized glasses, I recommend going with the Costa Del Mar glasses. Get the 580G. Been running those for about a year, and uh, I'll tell you what, I haven't even had a scratch on them. So anyway, get a good pair of polarized glasses. You're gonna look for these beds. The male's gonna fan out a, a bed for you first. A female's gonna come cruise the shallows. They're gonna go ahead and pick out a bed, lay their eggs. They're gonna spend some time protecting that bed, protecting their eggs. Eggs hatch, you'll see the bass fry. The males are gonna spend a little bit of time protecting the, 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 those, those fry, they're youngins, and then he's gonna swim off, okay? Later on, about in late March, early April, you'll have the bluegills start doing their business. They're gonna move up, they're gonna do the same thing, build beds, male go on there, females lay her eggs, they'll spend some time protecting it, and later on, you have the shad moving in there, all right? That's about a week to about two week phenomenon that you'll see shad up in the shallows. And what they're doing, they're, they're laying their eggs in the algae, in the little rocks in there early in the morning. They move up early in the morning, they move off. So now you folks understand what's going on. It's very important to understand what's gonna be happening here in the next few months in order to position yourself so that you can catch these fish. Um, I'm going to talk about four lakes today, Saguaro, Bartlett, Roosevelt, and Pleasant. And the reason why I threw Pleasant in there is the one that's closest to town. However, it's the toughest lake. You learn that lake, you can probably fish anywhere across the nation. Uh, I spent some time at Pleasant. I think the first six trips I went there, I didn't even catch a single fish. And uh, actually, my fiance sitting down there, she actually caught one before I did when we went out to the lake. And uh, we, we won a tournament there. She actually fell asleep, I threw out a rod, stuck it in her armpit, and uh, I thought she was snagged, and I turned over, and actually she had one on, reeled that one in, it was actually a pretty nice one, ended up catching two more for that day, and ended up winning the tournament. And I think that's the last fishing trip we ever went together, so. <laughs> but uh, we're due for another one. Anyway, at Lake Pleasant, again, the spawn should be happening right now, and please keep in mind, not all the fish will move up and spawn at the same time. You're probably only seeing about 20% of the fish spawn right now. It's gonna be 20%, 30%, 30%, and then so on. And then the small wave actually comes uh, at the very end, okay? One of my favorite ways to catch them at Lake Pleasant and a way that I've actually won a lot of money is just throwing a wacky rig Cinco, okay? When I have somebody new in my boat and uh, they haven't spent much time on the water, this is what they're gonna be throwing nine out of 10 times. It's really hard to screw up. Believe it or not, folks, you can cover a lot of water throwing this. I'm throwing this on a seven foot four medium action, eight pound test sunline fluorocarbon, Dowa ballistic rod, uh, Dowa Steve's spinning reel, okay? Or spinning reel, uh, ballistic spinning reel in a Steve's a rod. And, um, this is all you do, folks, is, is, is don't overcomplicate it. You just want to throw it out there, let it sink all the way to the bottom, okay? Now, you only want to throw this in clear water. Most of our lakes here in Arizona is pretty clear. What you're fishing is from the top 
to the bottom. Once the fish looks at it, on the bottom, you want to give it a little pop. Usually that's when they pick it up or they pick it up on the initial fall. I already got one on my line right now, okay? So again, folks, this works. And the reason why this works is the bass are up shallow. This is a shallow water technique. And um, you know, the males are gonna be protecting the bass fry. You wanna target those, uh, those fry pods that you see. And also the females that are cruising up shallow and uh, they're, they're looking for a meal, they're gonna be hungry. And you can actually cover a lot of water. What I like to do is I just put my trolling motor on a steady, slow mode, and then I throw it as far as I can in front of the boat, let it sink to the bottom, give it a few pops, and then just reel up and cast as far as the front of the boat I can, uh, as I can. So I cover actually a lot of water, and what you wanna do is go in Paul's Hideaway. Uh, there's a cove called Jack, um, I, I don't know if I can say it up here, but uh, Jack, uh, Jackass Cove is, is what it's called. Uh, I didn't name it. Honeymoon Cove. Any one of those coves. And um, you can actually um, catch a lot of fish doing this, okay? Two colors. Don't overcomplicate it. I like green pumpkin this time of year. Later on, when that shad spawn starts happening, you want to throw a white color, okay? We did this at Pleasant a while back where I thought the Cinco bite had uh, already died. Usually I will throw a Cinco all the way up to about the first week of June. Then I put it in my box, I put it away. It never even goes on the boat until next spring. Okay, the reason why you wanna throw white or anything that imitates a shad is the shad, they have a, the bottoms are white. You wanna throw something that imitates a shad. This happens to be a six inch Cinco. It's a, only an inch bigger, but it sinks a lot faster than what you just saw, okay? We did this at Pleasant a couple years ago, ended up catching 15 pounds for our best five, way in the back of the river, and um, again, they would not touch the green pumpkin. So this is the only time you wanna experiment with different colors, and it's the best time to throw white because the shad are white, uh, or most, mo most of it's white, they have a black top, but again, this one, or they also have a uh, color, called smoke shad that's also another color if, if, if the shad spawn is already happening so again this also works at Bartlett right now but remember clear water application is starting to push a lot of water into Bartlett there might be better baits such as a spinner bait out there but again this is probably my favorite technique to catch them at Pleasant from now until June okay